In this tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to making a new blank document, taking a picture from an old document or an alternate document and placing it onto that new blank canvas, and then using a series of blending option uh, tools and techniques such as stroke and drop shadow to make something come alive or to make it look like it's coming off the screen or just to give it a little bit of uh, character. And then when we're finished with that I'm going to take you through some of the nuances of the text tool and how to actually make the text come alive or be a little bit more dynamic. First thing we need to do here uh, is open up any picture there is. I just chose this picture right here. It's a dark hillside in your photography folder. If we go File, New, or Control N, that gives us a brand new dialog box here right, that says, okay, what size do you want it to be? What do you want to name it? Well, we're just going to name it um, Text. And Picture. The resolution is 72 pixels per inch, which to be honest is not what I would recommend for something if you intend to print it off. 72 pixels per inch is typically used for things that you see on the internet or on your computer screen. We're going to go with 150 pixels per inch and the size of this doesn't necessarily matter. You can check it in inches here instead of pixels. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to make the width uh, 8.5 inches and the height 11 inches simply because that's your standard print piece of paper, your letter size piece of paper. I'm going to hit OK. And I get this white blank canvas, which is exactly what I wanted. The first thing that I said that I'm going to teach you is how to take this picture right here and throw it on here. And literally, that's all you need to do. You can grab your move tool by, we'll just take the shortcut here, letter V. If you don't want to use shortcut, it's located right here. And I go back over to this document with the picture in it I make sure that I click on it you see that the the border around it has highlighted to a, a, a richer color blue and now I can grab this layer and I can drag it down and as soon as I get under the canvas you'll notice that there is a little plus symbol there meaning that do I want to add it to the canvas and as soon as you let go with your left click boom it slammed itself down onto that canvas and actually this one remains for now we can minimize this, get it out of the way, and take a look at this. You'll now have, see that you have a white background and a picture layer. So I'm just going to double click on that layer and name it picture. And I'm free to, if I want to, use my move tool and move this layer around. That is, see this, this uh, angry dialog box here? It says, could not move your layer because it's locked. Well, turns out that I'm on the wrong layer and sure enough it is locked. If I want to move this layer I actually have to make sure that I'm on not the background layer here but that I'm on my picture layer and now my move tool will work just fine. As I said before we're going to go into blending options here to play around with some of the things some of the effects that you can add to this picture right here. Specifically we're going to mess around with stroke and drop shadow. To get into blending options, there are a bunch of different ways to get to it. Uh, one of the quickest ways, though, is to probably right-click on that layer and go to blending options. So in other words, you right-click and choose the second thing down right here, blending options. Once you click on that, you get this brand new layer style blending options dialog box. And actually, uh, the first thing that you're in this blending options is being able to blend a picture into another picture and some other tutorial will cover that but if we move our way down here and we click on each of these individual or different techniques slash objectives tools if you will you'll notice that as I click on them and highlight them in blue my controls here in the middle change. For instance, if I'm on satin, you'll see that I have my satin structure tools. And if I click on 
drop shadow, you'll see that I have my structure and my quality controls over here. I'm going to uncheck all these that I checked before, just so we can get back to our original picture. Just by being, uh, just by having rather a checkbox in these does not mean that you're controlling them. For instance, I can go down here and put a check in stroke like this, and I don't have my stroke controls over here. I actually still have my drop shadow controls because that's what it is in dark blue. That's what I have selected. So I'm going to uncheck this stroke down here. And drop shadow right here has now been automatically selected. In other words, this picture right over here will have a drop shadow on it. And if you look closely, you can see a very faint drop shadow behind that picture. I can change all of the drop shadow options on this picture from the control bar over here. In other words, if I want to change how far away that drop shadow goes from the picture, I can just change the distance. And you'll see that things start to float farther and farther away when it looks like the picture is coming up at you in at least some respects. And now I can change the opacity to lighten that drop shadow up a little bit so it's semi-opaque. I can change the angle using this little rotation angle device here. I can even type in an angle if I want to type in 180 degrees. Hit enter. There it is. That is my drop shadow. It looks pretty silly to be honest because I didn't give it a good angle and it's not a good distance away. It just looks like a gray box next to my picture. So you'll notice now that my layer over here now has an effect added to it and it is the drop shadow effect right here. And all I have to do once again is right click go into blending options and I can change that drop shadow. I click on the drop shadow right here to highlight it and I change the angle so it's a little more appropriate. I change the distance. I can change the spread even. I can open it up, dull it down. I can change the size of it, which will begin to mute. If you change the size and spread together, you'll see that it will actually grow. If you change just the spreader, just the size, you'll notice that it does something a little bit different. I'm going to change the size back down to here. I do want a little bit of those fuzzy edges on there. The super nice thing about this is you actually don't need a lot of these controls because you can hover over your document and just grab the shadow and move it to the exact location you want instead of trying to play and punch in the different distances and the different angles. You can place this thing almost exactly how you want it. From there though, I can change things to be, I can change the blending mode to any of these, to overlay, to darken, to dissolve, where it makes a little crackly look to it. For now, right now, I'm going to leave this as normal though. You can experiment with that on your own. I'm also going to add a stroke to this picture, however. All these other tools in Drop Shadow, you can certainly play around with, but they are experimental at this point, so we're just going to leave them alone. I'm going to go down here to dr Stroke, though, however. Stroke is just a fancy or a Photoshop term for putting a border around something. In other words, we're putting a border around this picture, and if you look closely, you'll see a little red border has popped up around my image. I can change the color of this border by simply clicking this color picker right here, and I could pick this neon or lime green color just as easily as I could have red. That does look a little bit silly, but I'm going to leave it as is. You'll also notice up here that it is three pixels. In other words, it only has, it's only three pixels wide. So it's a pretty thin border. If I change that to 10 pixels and hit enter, you'll notice that I have a much thicker border here. And once again, you'll notice in my layers palette, I still have those effects. I have my drop shadow, and now I have added to that effect a stroke. I can poke the eyeball out of the stroke.